Hi everyone, today I'm here with Siobhan. Hi. And we're going to be talking all about the Physics Olympiad again. We've just made a video looking through an exam and seeing what kind of questions are involved. Um, but now we're going to talk more about maybe some tips for how to actually sit one of these exams, how to do well and what it's all about. Okay, so Siobhan, you've been involved in the Physics Olympiad, you've done it before, you've been a team leader and you're still involved with the Australian team. Um, so tell me a little bit, what is the Physics Olympiad to you? Uh, so the International Physics Olympiad is a competition for high school students and it's held every year in a different country around the world and it attracts uh, national teams of around yeah, five students per team from nearly 90 countries. So it's, it's quite big and it's part of the International Science Olympiad movement. So there are other competitions for other disciplines like chemistry and yeah. maths as well. Yeah. So you can go to this Olympics in a way and become a gold medal physicist, is that how it works? You get bragging rights yeah. like that? <laughs> yeah, so the, the end prize is th these medals yeah. and um, yeah, there are gold medals if you finish in the top around 10% of students. I hear it's so competitive to get there. Like, there's, I think, thousands of Australian students that sit it, but likewise around the world, so many students trying to prepare for these exams and get in. Yeah. Do you know sort of the numbers around it? Yeah, exactly. So the uh, selection process to make it onto a national team can almost be as tough <laughs> as the competition itself. So in Australia, we have a few thousand students every year in um, year 10 and year 11 who sit the national exam through Australian Science Olympiads. Uh, in countries such as America and the UK, it's similar kind of numbers. And then you have really quite strong countries such as China and India, where they mm. have tens or even hundreds of thousands of students sitting their national yeah. exams, <laughs> or to try and make it to the next stage, which is usually a training camp at a university where you learn a lot of extra physics that yeah. you wouldn't get to see uh, usually in school. So maybe like you actually really do have to train like an Olympian for one of these things so a lot of studying would have to go into this. I'm sort of wondering if a student is preparing for this Olympiad how does that differ from what they're learning to pass their high school exams or what they're like learning alongside this? Is it a big extra commitment? I would say that preparing for the Olympiads is an extra commitment. There is uh, a syllabus out there for the International Physics Olympiad which is usually pitched at a sort of first year university level. Mm. Um, so you do have to cover a lot of extra topics um, and clearly putting in the hours practicing hard physics problems is, is important in order to um, learn the kind of um, skills and techniques that you can employ not just on paper but the experiment as well. Yeah. Like it's hard for a a student at high school to get a huge exposure to a variety of different experiments and so that's where um, sort of partnerships with universities and things really. Oh you can actually get trained yeah. on some of the equipment yeah. not just reading yeah. how the experiments work. Yeah. yeah but then furthermore if you're interested in like playing around with um, electronics and sort of building your own physics kits at home then that will stand you in really good stead. Yeah as okay. Well. Do you think doing well in this exam is a matter of practicing? Sometimes that is the case with exams, like the more practice problems you can get your hands on, the better you'll just do because they tend to repeat things. Is that the case here or is it re you really need the understanding? I think for the Physics Olympiad you need the practice but you also need that understanding in order to drive you to practice. Yeah. Like <laughs> if you're curious about how something works or what's the solution to this really unusual physics situation like then that motivates you to um, seek out those tricky problems mm. um, but certainly the physics olympiad problems year to year they're usually pretty unique um, they're specially written well ahead of the actual competition and they're kind of really kept top secret so you'll be seeing some unusual kinds of physics that uh, yeah, you would not come across in a, in a standard high school textbook for sure. Okay, well maybe let's get practical. Um, because you've got so much experience with the exam, you might have some tips or advice for like how to best prepare. Maybe let's talk about getting into like your national team first. Like how should you be preparing for that? Well, I definitely have a look on 
the internet to see what the national selection process is for your country. So in Australia, we have uh, one exam a year that has a short multiple choice section and then some sort of short to long answer physics problems as well. And those past papers are all online and we also have a platform called Olympiads Online where you can um, practice solutions and, and get uh, feedback on how you're going and, and talk to other students who are preparing for this national exam too. So yeah, see what the situation is in your own country but there's there's probably an existing Science Olympiad organisation okay, in your country, so know. yeah. Yeah, okay. What about, like maybe you've been successful getting that far, how do you actually do well at this paper? Like, how do you walk into it and just do well? Yeah, well, <laughs> so it's as easy that as is, that? That is the gold medal question. <laughs> um, so I think it's important to put that in context in terms of every year there's maybe 400 students that turn up to the International Physics Olympiad and they're all pretty capable and pretty bright um, but still this exam will manage to stump many of them like um, in the 2016 paper in the theory section uh, all the gold medalists so the students in the top 10 percent they all got above 70 percent but then the number who get above 90 percent is like yeah. quite a bit smaller again <laughs> hmm. so uh, it's definitely a tough a tough exam so having the understanding of um, physics kind of first principles and being able to be flexible in your thinking and bring lots of different bits of physics together on the day yeah I think that's how you go and a fair bit of persistence <laughs> as well because the exams are, are really long and yeah to see an experiment through for five hours mm. without stopping <laughs> is yeah that's a tough tough thing to do yeah i think um the exam we've just looked at it was held in zurich in switzerland in that year and they had a bit at the end about the lhc the particle collider there so maybe it's a good idea to look at maybe country specific you know physics that's that you know is in that country um or physicists maybe yeah for sure i think the uh people who are writing the exams often take inspiration from the physics that's in that part of the world or maybe that a physicist from that country has has gone on to to study so yeah the large hadron collider question was a great example of that because yeah. you think of switzerland and you think geneva and then you think hmm, large hadron collider and yeah you know, higgs bosons and things so as part of their preparation for the international physics olympiad students might also participate in a regional competition like the asian physics olympiad and that's coming to Australia next year. It'll be held in Adelaide. So I'm really excited to see to see what kind of problems the Australians can come up with. So do people that do well in, say, the Physics Olympiad, do they tend to go on to become physics majors? Is it a way to identify great physicists? Well, in my own case, um, I've gone on to study physics at uni and now I have a job working as a physicist. And I think that was really started by getting involved in the Physics Olympiad. I think more broadly, it definitely encourages students who discover they have a capability in science to follow that up and see where it takes them. But there's more to doing physics research than doing it in five hour bursts and working with like clearly set out problems. Like mm. you have to find your own problems and, and troubleshoot and be creative over a much longer period of time. Yeah. So I think it's a great tool to encourage students to go further into science, but I don't think it's necessarily about identifying. Yeah, I think research physics is a whole different beast to whether it's exam physics at any level or high school exams um, but I sort of agree anything that you can do well in that's sort of physics related really inspires you to want to go down that path so like I didn't do the Olympiad but I did similar sort of things locally at high school and you know just doing them made me want to become that physics major so yeah, yeah. And furthermore you're meeting other students yeah. with the same kind of passions and values as yourself and, and then that's a whole other motivating factor. And I think that's the, one of the strongest parts about the Olympiad is it's really held with this atmosphere of bringing different people from different cultures together yeah. who are all like, yeah, physics is what we have in common. And that's, that's a really nice thing. Do you sort of have any anecdotes about how many people you knew back then who have become physics majors? Like a lot, a little? 
Yeah, definitely. Like on my physics team, um, I've got a teammate who's now doing his PhD at LIGO, so gravitational oh, wow. waves. <laughs> and I've also got physics Olympiad friends who have gone on to cosmology, plasma physics, teaching, um, other great unis around mm. the world and and science isn't sort of driven by international collaborations and I reckon it's excellent to go to the physics link out and be like oh, what kind yeah. of collaborations are going to come out of this yeah. and where are people going to go with their science all right you know. is there any more tips maybe you'd like to share or any any last advice about the exam oh I think I'd just encourage like keen keen students if you're in year like year 10 or year 11 so that's the Australian school years for 15 to 17 year olds if you're keen on physics and you're looking for a little something to extend yourself yeah why not give it a go oh thank you Siobhan um and thank you guys for watching thanks (laughs) Tony